Hello, my name is Brittany Raftis and I'm a registered dietitian at the David Braley Sport Medicine Clinic at McMaster University. And today I'm sharing a quick presentation with three tips for healthy snacking while at home. I know that many of us are in a different routine right now, either working from home or studying from home or just spending more time at home in general. And so snacking can sometimes be a challenge. So today I'll be sharing a few tips to keep in mind for healthy snacking at home. So first I wanna run through this example of how your energy levels can fluctuate throughout the day based on what you eat and when you eat. So in this scenario here, um, our example individual wakes up in the morning, uh, doesn't have anything to eat. You can see the energy levels are a little bit low just following that uh, overnight fast. By about 12 p.m. this individual's energy levels drop low. This person is feeling hungry, probably starving, uh, maybe lightheaded, uh, probably lacking some focus and concentration. Um, those hunger signals finally kick in and this individual has a big lunch here. Um, but because they haven't really eaten well yet throughout the day and they got to that point where they were kind of over hungry, this lunch doesn't really hold them or kind of satisfy them as it normally would. So they continue snacking into the afternoon, 2 p.m. they have some cookies, granola bar at 3 p.m., 4 p.m. some crackers, and then uh, dinner at 6 p.m., which is a kind of a well-balanced meal and gives them that kind of uh, gradual and steady increase and decrease in energy as we want meals to, to typically do. So the main take home here is just that your energy levels really can fluctuate throughout the day based on what and when you eat. Um, and this brings me to my first tip, which is try to maintain a regular eating routine as much as possible while you're at home. So this can be challenging because you may not have, you know, a formal lunch break or snack breaks as you did previously now that you're spending more time at home, but it's just as important as ever. In general, we wanna kind of aim for a meal or snack every three to four hours. Uh, and you should probably start to feel hungry within that time. The main thing though is we wanna try and avoid going six hours without eating because this often causes us to get to a point where we're over hungry and then leads us into kind of overeating and that spike and crash in energy levels as we saw in the previous example. So if we're eating roughly every three to four hours, snacking and meals, um, this can help us to have that steady energy level throughout the day as we see in this example here, which will lead us to kind of feeling better, having better concentration, more control over our hunger and, and over our decisions. So our main take home here is to try and be proactive as much as possible while you're at home, just as you would be if you were kind of heading to work or heading to class in your typical routine. So back to this example again, I just want to focus in on the afternoon snacking here. So this individual has a big lunch at noon and then kind of continues snacking every hour on cookies, granola bar crackers, probably just heading into the kitchen and grabbing whatever is available. Um, so here I just want to bring up the point for my tip number two of trying to practice mindful eating while you're at home. Um, because we're not in our typical routine, we might find that we're sitting home at more, we have more access to food all day, and we might be finding some challenges in, in eating in ways that we didn't previously when we had a kind of typical routine that we stuck to. So one of the concepts of mindful eating, mindful eating is a very complex topic and not something that you know I'm gonna really dig into in too much detail today, but I did wanna introduce the concept of the fact that there are actually three different types of hunger. So we tend to think of hunger as kind of, I'm either hungry or I'm not, but actually hunger, hunger can happen on a spectrum of kind of intensity of how hungry you feel. Um, and there are also different triggers in, internally and externally in our environment that cause us to feel hungry. So this kind of three types of hunger will help us to kind of understand this. The first type is a physical hunger. So this is your body's physical need for food. Some signs of physical hunger are kind of an empty stomach feeling, uh, maybe some um, growling of your stomach. And typically if you've had about three to four hours or more since your last meal or snack, that's probably a time that you're feeling physically hungry. The second type of hunger we call mind hunger. So this is usually more of a mental hunger, not as related to your physical need to eat, but something that can uh, frequently occur throughout the day. So a few examples of, or a couple examples of mind hunger would be 
For example, if you walk by your kitchen and see a box of cookies sitting on the counter and all of a sudden you want to have some cookies or you're watching TV, you see a commercial for ice cream and all of a sudden all you want to do is eat ice cream. These are a couple external things in our environment that can cause us to think about food and all of a sudden have a craving for these food items completely unrelated to a physical hunger. The third type of hunger is emotional hunger. So emotions can trigger us to eat um, and all types of emotions can do this. So happiness, sadness, stress, and boredom being one that or two that we might be experiencing more so now. So again, this is a pretty complex topic and not something that I'm going to spend too much time on now, but um, I think just kind of being aware of the different types of hunger that can occur, all the different triggers that you might have in your environment um, or in your routine throughout the day that can cause you to think about food. And my main take home here or action from this piece would be just kind of take a moment to pause when you do feel hungry or when you do get a craving throughout the day and try and reflect on what the actual cause of that hunger is. Is it a physical hunger? Does your stomach feel empty? Is your stomach growling? Has it been three or four hours before eating or three or four hours since your last meal or snack? If so, it's a physical hunger and definitely a good time to look at having a snack at that point. Or is it something that all of a sudden you're just craving this food item because of maybe stress or something that you just saw on TV or walking through your kitchen. If that's the case, take a moment to pause, keep yourself busy for a certain amount of time and likely that craving will start to dissipate. And then again, going back to this um, example that we discussed previously, we see this afternoon eating um, or snacking on things like cookies, granola bar crackers. These are all kind of very carbohydrate focused snacks or foods um, and nothing here is really helping this person to have sustained energy in the afternoon so you'll see that they're getting all of these spikes and dips um, as they eat these kind of refined snacks they don't have anything here to help that energy be sustained um, or to really help them feel kind of full or satisfied after eating one of the snack one of these snacks which leads them to that kind of grazing um, pattern that we see here so that brings me to my third tip, which is about snack balance. So trying to pair fiber with protein and some healthy fats at each snack will help to give your body the balance of nutrients that it needs to feel full, feel satisfied after a snack, um, and will also help to slow digestion and slow the release of that energy so that we can avoid those big spikes and valleys in energy levels and instead have a kind of steady increase and decrease in energy levels. So when we think about sources of fiber, this is coming from foods in the categories of whole grains, whole fruits and vegetables. Protein is coming from foods such as nuts and seeds or nut butters, um, dairy products, so yogurt, cheese as kind of snack examples, eggs or other meat or animal based products. And then lastly would be things like beans and lentils. So some examples here of some balanced snacks. So on the left side, we've got our fiber would be something like whole grain crackers with cheese, simple snack, um, a whole fruit with almonds or other nuts or nut butter, fruit and some Greek yogurt. Um, and then on the right side are some combination foods. So something like an apple and sun butter as kind of a nut friendly alternative um, or almond butter or any other nut butter. Roasted chickpeas are an excellent snack idea. They're crispy, they're crunchy, um, and you can buy them flavored or make them yourself at home with any seasonings that you like. But these are a very uh, high fiber, high protein food. So a very slow digesting food and something that will give you kind of more sustained energy. And then lastly, we've got some hummus and vegetable sticks. So again, depending on what you have at home, um, just try and be kind of proactive and know kind of some of the snack ideas that you have at home to pull from. And that will help you to have these ideas or know what to eat when it's time to have your next snack. So lastly, I just wanted to include our clinic information here. Um, currently, we're not open because of the COVID-19 restrictions, but this is the number for um, our clinic when it does open up to book appointments. In the meantime, I am offering virtual appointments uh, through the clinic. So I included my email address here. Feel free to send me an email to connect about booking a nutrition consultation. Um, if you are kind of struggling with eating at home, 
or have any kind of nutrition questions or concerns. Thanks a lot for listening and stay well.